This lovely mamma story is titled, Hilda Takes House Arpeggio. If you love story like this, like and subscribe and turn on notifications so you will not miss the next part. Hilda walked through the cabin down to the counter. Hilda, a man called out. I can't see your figure clearly because your clothes are too baggy, the man said. You have a nice ass. He asked her to come sit by his side. The guy was the only son of the feudal lord, and their family had only borne males for three generations. He had been persistently harassing Hilda since her mom passed away. I'm busy, Hilda yelled. The guy hiccuped, telling her that there were no other customers there. The man had publicly proposed to her at the restaurant she worked for, spreading rumors of them being in a relationship. He had come down several times and told her she didn't like him hundreds of times, but the man never listened. He was a noble, sure, but Pinter was 32 and 12 years older than Hilda. He had a stubborn personality that pissed Hilda off, and he was balding. Ignoring his nonsense is the best course of action, Hilda thought, walking away. Hey, where are you going? Pinter shouted. He walked close to her and held her roughly by the hands. Ouch. Hilda expressed in pain. Pinter smirked, telling her to stop resisting, asking how long she thought he would be able to hold himself back. Hilda stared at him in anger, wondering what he was talking about. Hilda was sure she had been the one holding herself back because she would have long smashed his head in with a beer mug if he weren't the feudal lord's son. Hilda warned him to let go of her, as she wasn't going to stay put if he continued acting this way. What can you do? Ha! Huh. Why don't you tell me? The man yelled in anger, adding more pressure to Hilda's hand. I said let go, Hilda yelled. You think there's nothing I can do to you? Not if I put my mind to it. Playing hard to get is only cued in moderation, Pinter said, calling her ungrateful for not being happy and accepting his attention. Ah! Hilda shouted. She had had enough of Pinter's attitude, reminding him that his hand hurt. She lifted her knees and struck him between his legs. Pinter crouched down in pain. Hilda looked at him, awed at how quickly and accurately she had hit him. Well done, my knee. Good job, she praised. The people in the cabin had their eyes glued on what was happening. Pinter still sat on the floor in pain. It was then Hilda understood the implication of what she had done. I'm screwed. What did I just do to the Lord's son? She thought, her heart beating faster. She figured that what she had just done had threatened the future generations of the Lord's family. I'm dead, she thought. Seeing that was the case and she was screwed anyway, she decided she should just go all out. The voice of Pinter echoed all over the cabin. Hilda stood behind the bars that confined her to a room, thinking of how doomed she was. There's no ending other than death, she thought. She held her head, asking why Lord Feudal hadn't put iron panties on Pinter since he was responsible for keeping his important part safe. She sat down on the floor, depressed, wondering if it was better to bite her tongue and bleed herself to death or have her head cut off. Her thoughts were interrupted by the arrival of some guards who had come to take her out of prison. Hilda was brought before Lord Feudal. She knelt down, looking straight ahead at Pinter sitting at his father's side. Why is someone who should be in the hospital bed here? she thought, wondering if he wanted to see her head cut off so badly. She looked to the other side of Lord Feudal to find a man standing, looking at her. She wondered who the man was, taking notice of his great body proportions, tall stature, wide shoulders, and pearl-white teeth, which complemented his black eyes and hair. Wow, what a sight for my sore eyes before my death, she thought, her eyes twinkling, staring at him. Hilda had always been told that she had elegant looks thanks to the blonde hair and unique magenta eyes she inherited from her mother, but now that she had seen this man's face, she knew that his was what they called elegant. Hilda Ruth. Lord Feudal yelled, much to Hilda's dismay. He had interrupted her from gazing at such a handsome and elegant man. Do you have any idea what you have done? Lord Feudal asked. Anyway, she thought immediately, bowing her head and asking the Lord in a rather loud voice to spare her. She told him it wasn't intentional and that it was just an accident. Pinter smirked, looking at her, but her reply wasn't what they both had expected. The same way your son claimed it was an accident every time he laid hands on my body, Hilda responded. She told him that if his son's actions were accidental, so were hers. She explained that her only wrongdoing was turning down his son, 
who kept hitting on her. But isn't that also what you want? She asked Lord Feudal, using to her advantage the fact that Lord Feudal wouldn't want to have a commoner as his daughter-in-law. At this point, Hilda had gotten up from the floor, as had Lord Feudal, who had risen from his seat, agreeing that he himself wouldn't want her as a daughter-in-law. Seriously, he should at least be handsome if he's stupid, or if he's old, he should at least have lots of hair, Hilda said, yelling at Pinter to speak up if he had a mouth. Just what did you believe in so much to keep bothering me? She asked. The handsome young-looking man stared at her as she shouted. Ah! Hilda exclaimed, remembering that her original plan was to beg for forgiveness. What am I doing? She asked herself. The young man laughed, still looking at her reaction. Hilda noticed the young man laughing at her and wondered why he was laughing when her life was on the line. The young man cleared his throat and spoke. Hearing her plead, I believe there's nothing Lady Hilda did wrong, he said. Hearing him, Hilda wondered if the young handsome man was taking her side. And not only was he taking her side, but he also called her lady. Why is he referring to me with that unfitting honorific, she thought. Vivis Count Strauss, Lord Feudal said, stuttering, as he listened to the young man speak. The Viscount continued, explaining to Lord Feudal that all Hilda had done was resist his son's advances. I fact, I would like to ask why your son continued to pursue a woman who kept pushing him away, Viscount Strauss said. Lord Feudal agreed, but still sought to punish Hilda for using violence on his son. However, Hilda immediately spoke up, cutting him short. Hey, I was the first victim of violence, that octopus. No, your son twisted my wrist first. Look at this bruise, she said, raising her fist. The Viscount decided that their case would be ruled as self-defense. Lord Feudal refused to take it lying down. Self-defense? My family lineage is at risk. How could you? Lord Feudal was cut short when he saw Viscount Strauss staring dangerously at him. Viscount Strauss instructed that his son was the one who should apologize for hurting Hilda. You must be feeling quite distressed already. How about we put all this behind us? Viscount Strauss said to Lord Feudal. Lord Feudal asked Viscount Strauss how he could give such a verdict after seeing his son in such a state. If you truly wish to distinguish between right and wrong, you're free to do so. That is, of course, if you have the confidence to turn Duke Apligio However, into your enemy. There's no Viscount definite Strauss evidence said. that this peasant is the one the Duke is looking for, Lord Feudal said. Viscount Strauss informed him that he was certain she was the one and thus instructed him to stop using impertinent remarks. Hilda looked at them as they argued, wondering what was going on. It does feel like they are talking about me, she thought. The Viscount walked to her, knelt down before her, and said, Let me formally introduce myself. My name is Logan Strauss. I am honored to meet you. Damn, he looks more handsome up close, Hilda thought. Logan assured her that there was no need for her to worry anymore. The only thing Hilda could see at that point was how sweet his voice sounded, but after a while, she also remembered that he had used honorifics on her again. She wondered if she was the one he was referring to as my lady. In a world where possessing powerful mana was proof of noble lineage, her skills were among the best, she could be said to be in the top five. Moreover, she was from one of the empire's ducal families, of which only four existed. But that girl cared more about beauty than anyone else. The Duke had concerns about what society said about her only liking a man for his looks, especially when she had turned down the prince's proposal for the mere reason that she didn't like his looks. Lucia had laughed in the face of the Duke, telling him that they were just not but pawns who couldn't say a word in front of her. The Duke had wanted her to become the Empress. However, the Duke and the Imperial family ignored Lucia's objections, only caring about their own wants, and they pushed forward with the marriage. Because of that, Lucia ran away from home. The truth was she didn't run away alone. She eloped with Gardner. That Gardner may have been a commoner with a lower standing, but he was an incredibly handsome man who could only be born once in a generation. The next day, after Hilda had narrowly escaped Lord Feudal, Viscount Strauss visited her house early in the morning. They sat facing each other at the table in the kitchen. Now, thirty minutes had passed, and the Viscount had begun recounting a story from the past. So, what you're saying is that the lady who eloped is my mom, and the gardener is my dad? Hilda asked the Viscount. That is correct, the Viscount told her. 
The Viscount had told her that her dad's only quality was his appearance, and he had no sense of self-responsibility, and his mental state was weak. On top of that, his physical health was so poor that before he could properly fulfill his role as the head of the house, he passed away. Listening to the Viscount, she could remember that even then, despite all that had happened with her dad, her mom still told her that he was the best husband, just because of how amazingly handsome he was. Anyway, that's not what's important, she thought. So, let me get this straight. You're saying I'm His Grace, Duke Arpeggio's only daughter? She asked Logan, the Viscount. Hilda was shocked, finding it crazy that she could actually be a noble. I was wondering why it felt like my bearing wasn't ordinary. It was because noble blood flows in my veins, she thought. Logan asked if she believed what he was saying to her. Well, to Hilda, while it seemed uncanny, the more she listened, the more the part about her mom seemed correct. Logan was curious about which part she meant. He asked if it was the part about Lady Lucia being a powerful mage. No, the part where mom only cares about beauty, she replied. Hmm. Anyway, Viscount Logan, right? She asked. Strauss, I am Logan Strauss, he corrected. Fine, Viscount Strauss, Hilda said, thanking him for saving her yesterday. Hilda was curious to know how he was able to intervene with such immaculate timing. Logan was slightly taken aback by her question, but still replied that he had been watching over her for quite some time. For some time? Starting from the moment I kicked Pinter and I was dragged away as a criminal? Hilda asked, wanting to be sure. From before then, Logan replied. Hilda asked again if he meant the time her mother had passed away. From before even then, Logan replied. Hilda couldn't believe she was hearing this. She wondered if Logan was a stalker. Regardless of the fact that he was handsome, she didn't think it was funny if he turned out to be a stalker. Seeing the reaction on Hilda's face, Logan decided to explain. Calling her attention, he informed her that seven years after her mother had eloped with her father, her grandfather, the Duke, managed to discover her location and had ordered her to return home to the duchy. But however, her mother had strongly rejected his order. What? What? Hilda exclaimed. She asked Logan if it could be that the Duke was trying to get her mother, who was already married, to get together with the crown prince, knowing fully well that her mother hated that. No way, Logan said to her. He explained that her mother hadn't returned because she didn't want her husband and her daughter, Hilda, to feel discriminated against if she were to return to high society. Is that so? Hilda thought. If Hilda had grown up in high society, she would have been looked down on. People would say that she carried dirty blood. However, living as a commoner wasn't any different because she would still be looked down on. To Hilda, being looked down on as a noble was more preferable. Anyway, Logan continued. He told her that due to the orders of the Duke, he was to observe from afar to ensure she was living well. Hilda recalled when she discovered her mother's illness. Even then, she knew it was too late to treat. She wanted to know why Logan, who had been charged to look over their well-being, did not offer any help. You should have just kept on watching, she said, asking him what made him change his mind and help her. Logan told her that the Duke wished to see her at least once, but he himself had stopped the Duke from taking such a decision. What for what reason? Hilda asked. Logan explained that her mother had hated living as a noble and had wanted to cut all ties with the ducal family. She had even written a letter to him, begging him not to reveal her identity to her. He also told her that he had wanted to follow her mother's wishes, but her life was in danger, so he had to intervene. I'm sure mom had her beliefs. However, they aren't necessarily my beliefs, she told him. Hearing this, Logan asked her if she wished to enter the ducal family. Isn't it obvious that I wish to be a noble? The opportunity appeared, so why should I reject it? She responded. What if the noble life is different from what you're imagining? The family members and other nobles will not like your presence, Lady Hilda, Logan said to her. Why don't you ask me once I've had the opportunity to experience it myself? Hilda responded. Logan informed her that she stood the chance to be bullied and gossiped about in a place where no one would be on her side, and also that her life may be put in danger by others in the family occasionally. I already know, Hilda said to him annoyed. No, if you did, you wouldn't say something like this so easily, Logan replied angrily. Hilda grew quiet, pouting, 
and wondered why Logan was angry at her for wanting to join the Ducal family. Is he thinking I'm not qualified, she thought. But then, she realized she didn't know anything. If I were a noble, would Pinter have treated me poorly as he did? Hilda yelled. She continued, asking him if Lord Strauss would have listened to him when he had tried to protect her if he wasn't a noble. If you didn't mention his grace's name, would the Lord have let me go easily? What I want is that sort of authority, she shouted. Of course, since you already have that authority, you would not know how amazing and envious that authority truly is, Viscount Strauss, she said. Disregard? Insult? Contempt? As a young woman living alone, Hilda had already experienced all that. So Logan should not expect her to give up the authority the nobles possess when it was sitting right before her, just because she feared going through all he was talking about. I also know we seem to have gone off topic. The reason His Grace wishes to meet with you, Lady Hilda, is because you may have inherited Lady Lucia's incredible magical talent, Logan said. If I inherited my mom's talent, I will be accepted as a member of the Arpeggios, right? She asked. Logan confirmed that she would, but then if she did not inherit her mother's talent, the Duke would likely take back his order, and of course, he would no longer be able to help her the way he did yesterday. What's this? Hilda thought. She could now see that the Duke, her so-called grandfather, only cared about his interests. He had no humanity. She thought of the fact that if she didn't have mana, she would have to return to her hometown. But what if I have mana, she thought, staring at her hands, as she remembered that in the past her mom would always tell her, Hilda, you only live once. And at this point, she had nothing to lose. His grace does not need to see you because of any sense of affection, Logan told her. He asked her again if she still wished to be part of the RPGO family. With a look of determination, she replied, Of course. Arpeggio territory, Hebron duchy. It took at least four whole days to get there via carriage. However, Logan kept the carriage going regardless of whether it was day or night, as if he were determined to break record time. And due to that, they had to sleep inside the carriage. Hilda wasn't able to take naps because of how uncomfortable the carriage ride was, and it was even more uncomfortable because of Logan. It wasn't really a matter of having to sleep with a male stranger in a small place. It would have been even better if they slept together, but Logan wouldn't go to sleep. Hey, why won't you sleep? She asked him. Uh, Lady Hilda, you don't have to worry about me. Staying up for a couple of days isn't a problem for me, he told her. Hilda sighed because she didn't even know if she would snore, grind her teeth, or even drool when she slept. How could she sleep when a male stranger was sitting right before her? Hilda finally fell asleep. Logan stared at her as her snoring filled the carriage. Hilda opened her eyes to find Logan staring and jolted up immediately. She asked Logan if she had been snoring. It's all right, Logan replied. She couldn't understand why he had just said it's all right. He could have just said yes. I imagine that I wouldn't be able to sleep. I can't believe it myself she said, covering her face in embarrassment. The first day they had met, she had thought she had shown him every disgraceful behavior that she possibly could, but now it appeared that it wasn't the end of it. Humiliation washed over her. Not only did she feel humiliated, but she was also making a clown of herself while Logan hadn't even shown any single flaw. She was pissed. Looking at him, she was sure he wasn't able to wash for two whole days like her, but then she wondered how his skin was not oily and how his hair could maintain its waviness. It's not fair, she thought. Finally, she decided not to let herself display any more disgracefulness. Well, that didn't last long because she gave up along the way. Yeah, let's just make Logan an exception, she thought, looking at him as she lay down to take a nap. Do I really live in the backwoods? Hilda thought, looking at the bustling city. She even wondered how much a restaurant employee earned in the city until realizing that she was now the daughter of the Arpeggio family and wouldn't need such jobs anymore. There's no need to be nervous already. It would take more time for us to arrive. Logan's voice broke her thoughts. You're right. Traditionally, a noble woman must maintain elegance at all times, Hilda responded. I believe, in that case, tidying up your disheveled hair will be the best course of action, Logan said to her. Ugh! Hilda exclaimed in frustration, but then she replied, 
telling Logan that her mother had taught her that elegance was something that came from the inside and wasn't something you could put on the outside. Logan just smiled and bent his hand over the chair where they sat and brought out a comb. He instructed Hilda to look over so he could comb her hair. My hair is oily right now, Hilda reminded him. I know, Logan replied. Hilda found it quite embarrassing. There's no need to feel embarrassed now, Logan told her. Can't he just say that he can't tell or that it's all right, she thought. When she felt his hand on her hair, it felt good, the way he brushed her hair, and it was the first time someone had brushed her hair since her mom passed away. It looks like this isn't your first time, Hilda commented. I did brush a lot of hair, Logan replied. Hilda gasped in shock, asking him whose hair he had brushed before. Logan explained to her that he had raised a domestic long-haired dog at his home before. A dog? Are you comparing me to a dog right now? Hilda exclaimed. Logan responded, telling her that he had simply answered the question he had been given. Damn it, I don't know if I should be offended or relieved, she thought. By the time Logan was done with her hair, she looked better and more beautiful. Hilda commended Logan for being good with his hands. What do you lack? Do you have any weaknesses or things that you are bad at? She asked. That's right. There are none, Logan replied. Hilda frowned at his reply. She found him detestable. She was going to find his weakness one day, thinking it fair that she did. Hilda wanted to know if she would be able to meet her mother's siblings at the duchy. You said she had two brothers and a sister, she stated. Logan informed her that they would most likely be at the townhouse, since it was the social season. His grace should have returned to the duchy after receiving the report, Logan told her. Then, do none of the other family members know that I'm coming, she asked. That's right, Logan confirmed. So, it seemed she would only be able to meet the duke upon her arrival. Do you feel like it's a shame? Logan asked her. Yes and no at the same time, she responded. Logan assured her that there was no need to feel bad, as not meeting them was actually better because they wouldn't treat her well. Do you really have to jump to conclusions? Who knows? Maybe they'll all fall for my cuteness, she told him. Um, well, I guess it's good of hope, Logan said. Looking at Logan, she knew what he had said was true. She chided herself not to feel down. At least the Duke was going to be there to welcome her, even though it was under the condition that she inherited her mother's magical prowess. We'll arrive at the duchy soon, she thought, looking through the window. Wow, it's really pretty, Hilda thought as the duchy came into view. Logan left the carriage, stretching his hand to offer help to Hilda as she stepped down. Ooh, so this is what it feels like to be treated with respect, she thought, staring at Logan's hands. She immediately scolded herself to behave and not act nonchalant to avoid looking like a country bumpkin. Welcome. We have been awaiting your arrival, a butler greeted, accompanied by two maids. Hilda found it strange and embarrassing that other people would bow their heads to her. She wondered if nobles felt the way she was feeling all the time. Logan inquired from the butler if the duke had arrived from the townhouse. Yes, he is in his study, the butler replied, also informing Logan that they had been instructed to escort them to the small drawing room after their arrival. Logan and Hilda quickly caught onto the statement made by the butler. Even if I can't use the large drawing room, I can use the bathtub, right? Hilda asked. The servants all turned, staring at her strangely. Ah, uh, was I too overbearing from the start? She thought, seeing their expressions. Ah, uh, is the bathtub also too much? Well, that's fine with me. Hilda said, telling them that she wasn't so uncomfortable that she'd request something unreasonable from them. Not at all. Of course, you can use the bathtub. We will also bring you a change of clothes. Let's escort you, the butler said. They all turned and walked into the duchy. When they had entered the manor, Logan held on to Hilda, whispering to her that she was to inform him if she happened to feel like the servants were impolite or treating her unreasonably. Are you worrying about me? Hilda asked him. Logan reminded her that he had told her that the people in residence might not be friendly towards her. I already know that, Viscount Strauss, but did you think I'd stay put if I were to get treated that way? She asked him. Thinking she was thinking of resorting to violence, he told her not to resort to violence if anything happened. Do you take me for some sort of thug? Hilda yelled. Logan stared at her blankly. Who would look at this guy? He's really giving me a questioning look, 
she wondered, looking at him. Hilda was escorted to her room. She marveled at the level of luxury she saw. Wow, she exclaimed. They're high-quality fragrances. I believe I remember one of them costing the same as two months of work, she said, looking around the room. She walked to the bathtub and dipped her hands into the water, finding it warm. She had prepared herself for the water being cold because Logan had kept warning her, but it didn't seem like they had any evil intentions since the water was warm. She stripped off her clothes and got into the bathtub. So this is the life of a noble. Being a noble is the best, she thought, and with that, she decided that she would become a noble no matter what. Her thoughts were interrupted by a maid. Pardon me, the maid said. Hilda was shocked. The maid asked if there was anything she could do for her. And no, I'm all right, Hilda replied. The maid left, informing her that she was next door if she needed assistance. Yes, thank you, Hilda responded. Watching the maid leave, Hilda wondered where the maid had come from, checking to see if there was a door over where she had come from. She decided to finish quickly, as she was too anxious about someone appearing out of nowhere again. She got out of the bathtub to find that her clothes were missing. Don't tell me, she said, looking to the shelf to find a dress. Am I supposed to change into these? She said, looking at the dress. Hilda held onto the dress, seeing as it was too big for her. There's no way I can wear this. I'd rather put holes in a sack and wear that, she thought, trying to hold onto the dress to stop it from slipping off. She began to shout for help. Maid, please help me. I need help, 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 she yelled. The maid peeped her head out of the room, asking what the matter was. Hilda explained to the maid that the clothes were too big for her and asked for the clothes she wore to the duchy. Oh my, I already sent those to the laundry room, the maid exclaimed. Hilda asked for her bag instead, but the maid informed her that she had also sent all the clothes in the bag to the laundry room. Hilda was getting angry listening to the maid. She asked the maid if there were any smaller clothes for her to wear. The maid said to her that the only clothes that were available in the correct size at the moment were the maid's uniform. Should I bring at least that? The maid asked. When the maid had said that, it immediately dawned on Hilda that she might have been set up just to be screwed over. How can there not be any single piece of clothing in the duchy that fits me? She thought, staring at the maid. She asked the maid if the duke had ordered her not to lend her any clothes. Not at all. However, there are no dresses prepared within the residence right now, the maid replied. Pardon, how is that possible? Hilda asked her. Most of the dresses are in the townhouse because it's the social season, the maid explained. Hilda was quiet for a minute and asked the maid for her name. And my name is Dorothy, the maid stuttered. Looking at Dorothy, she knew what they were trying to do to her. She knew they were trying to tell her that she was a peasant, and they expected her to know her place as one and stop acting like a noble. I'll have to change clothes, listen to me well, and bring what I ask for she said to the maid, making up her mind not to back down at this point. Did I keep you waiting? She said to Logan. Logan replied, but seeing her, he was lost for words. Hilda was dressed up in male apparel. What kind of rebellious act is this? Logan asked her. I don't know, she said, folding her hands as she explained to Logan what had happened with the maid. So, you have no clothes? Logan asked her, curious to know if that was why she wore male clothes. Her silence gave him the answer he needed, and he immediately turned to go send people into the city to find her appropriate clothes. Before he could walk away, Hilda held his hand and stopped him, telling him that the sun was going down soon and she was sure they wouldn't get back in time. He wanted to protest, but Hilda was quick to remind him that her dressing would not decide if the Duke was going to kick her out of the duchy or not. Logan accepted the fact that she was right, but nevertheless, he apologized telling her that he couldn't punish the maids on the matter as they were employees of the duchy. I know that much. Don't worry, I'll take care of this matter on my own, she assured him. Take care of it on your own? How do you plan on doing that? Logan asked her. Well, I'll take time thinking about it. Taking care of the situation at hand comes first, she responded. Let's go. His grace must be waiting, she told him, opening the door so they could leave. Logan stopped her adjusting the necktie on her clothes, skeptical if she should see the duke in her state. I'm worried that his grace might get angry, he said to her, still adjusting her clothes. Well, it's not like he'll kill me, right? She said. 
She urged him to stop nagging and just pray that she indeed inherited an immense amount of mana from her mother. So, it's you, Lucy's daughter, the duke said, looking darkly at Hilda. I'm pleased to meet you, your grace. My name is Hilda Ruth, Hilda greeted. The duke immediately noticed what she was wearing. What are you wearing? He asked her, telling her that he had ordered the maids to prepare adequate clothing for her. Well, actually, the dress they gave me was too big for me, she told the duke. Even so, a full-grown woman wearing men's clothes? Aren't you embarrassed? The duke asked. Hilda responded to him in a harsh tone that it couldn't be helped since there wasn't a single dress in the duchy that fit her. So, a servant gave you male clothes, and you wore them without giving it a second thought? The duke asked. She looked at the duke straight in the face and told him that she hadn't just accepted what the maid had given her, but she had told her to bring the male clothes to her, since putting on male clothes was better than putting on the maid's uniform. I came here as your granddaughter, you know, she thought. How ridiculous, the duke commented. Then Logan spoke up, telling the duke that he was at fault, as he should have told the maids to prepare clothes for Hilda to change into beforehand. T.S.K., she really is just like her mother, the duke said. Hilda chuckled, wondering why he was saying that as though it was something offensive. She thanked the Duke, adding the fact that she tends to hear that a lot. T.S.K., your magical talent better be just like your mother's as well, the Duke said to her. Hilda felt his words uncalled for. The Duke sighed as he watched his granddaughter. Come sit here, he instructed her. Fortunately, it looks like my clothing is past, she thought, walking closer to the Duke. You have probably already heard from Viscount Strauss how incredible of a maid your mother was, the Duke stated. Hilda confirmed his words, but informed him that she had never seen her mother use magic. The Duke told her that no mage had been born with powerful mana like her mother's for over a hundred years now. He also reminded her that their Melbourne Empire was built from magic, so possessing powerful mana was proof of being part of a noble lineage. Needless to say, even a commoner like her knew so much. The imperial family, who had founded the Melbourne Empire, was from a great archmage lineage, and nobles were naturally descendants of mages. However, as time passed, the blood diluted. Hilda had heard that not even the imperial family produces powerful mages now. There were quite a lot of things Hilda had learned from travelers. The current prince is without mana. As he is without mana, people are wondering if he is of royal blood. Hilda's thought was interrupted by the Duke telling her that if she could prove that she was from their noble lineage, he was willing to accept her as a member of the Apergio household. How can I prove that then? Do I need to learn magic and show you? She asked him. There is an easier method than that. Look over here, the Duke said to her. That is? Can you read those letters? The Duke asked her. Do I fail if I'm unable to? She inquired. The Duke explained to her that what she was seeing were runes, and they were characterized by magic. Those letters form a chant related to light magic, he said to her, pronouncing the runes. Oh, she exclaimed, pronouncing the words to the surprise of Logan and the Duke. Hilda wondered why they were both surprised. So you can say it? Logan asked her. I'm not stupid, you know, she responded. Logan explained to her that without magic, one couldn't read runes, and even if they heard it, it only sounded like scraping glass. What does that mean? Hilda asked them. She was so excited to find out that she had mana, but her excitement was short-lived when the Duke told her that it was still possible to read runes even if one had so little mana that they couldn't even use magic. What? Hilda exclaimed. You cannot dare to call yourself a part of the Apergio household with just a tiny bit of mana, the Duke said to her. Just what do I have to do then? Hilda asked, infuriated. Hilda Ruth, spend a night in the night mansion, the Duke replied. Hilda didn't believe that was all. She wanted to know more, but the Duke told her that that was all she had to do. What? she asked, shocked. To hell, I just need to spend a night in another mansion, she thought, surprised, thinking it was only just a piece of cake. This place looks haunted, Hilda exclaimed, staring at the mansion swarmed with birds flying all around it. The mansion looked so dark. It is, Logan said to her. What? Hilda exclaimed in fear. Be serious. Are you really going to send me into a haunted house? She yelled. I told you earlier, Logan said, telling her that the house was haunted with evil spirits, not ghosts. When did you tell me? She asked him. 
Logan reminded her that he had informed her of the presence of Manaborn. Manaborn, evil spirits, and ghosts aren't the same, you know, Hilda replied, almost crying, thinking she'd rather spend a night in the ruins, wondering what a house where evil spirits appeared had to do with magic. The night before, what is the night mansion? Hilda asked Logan. Logan sighed, requesting that she come to his room to be served a cup of tea first. Hilda agreed. Indeed, a handsome man should have good manners, she thought, following behind. Logan, serving the tea, began to explain what the night mansion was. The night mansion is a mansion that was previously used by nobles for their coming-of-age ceremonies, Logan said. He continued informing her that it was located east of Hebron in the canyons. Coming-of-age ceremony? Is spending a night there considered a coming-of-age ceremony? She asked in a surprised voice. She had always thought nobles did what they wanted for their coming-of-age ceremony. It's not whatever they want, Logan said to her. Are you reading my mind? She asked, seeing that he had countered her thoughts. Your eyes said everything, Logan said to her. He told her that beings known as Manaborn existed in the night mansion. What are they? She asked. Manaborn were spirits that were born from mana. Some humans used magic by harnessing the power of Manaborn. It sounded complicated to Hilda, but then she wanted to know what the connection was between the Manaborn and the coming-of-age ceremony. Powerful magical powers are indicative of noble blood, and when faced with a strong mage, the Manaborn obey, Logan informed her. So, the fact of spending a night in that mansion unharmed counts as proof of being a powerful mage, right? She asked. Yes, you're right, Logan confirmed. Hilda was quick to ask about those who were not powerful mages. According to records, most individuals with weak magical powers were possessed and, as a result, they died, went insane, or committed suicide. Huh? Wait. Are there still people in that state these days? She asked. No, there aren't, Logan replied. Hilda sighed in relief, hearing that. It didn't look dangerous anymore. Nowadays, there aren't many people with strong magical powers, so they don't have to do a coming-of-age ceremony in that mansion, Logan stated. It then dawned on Hilda that her so-called grandfather was sending her to such a place right after meeting her. If something feels off, you could withdraw and leave, Logan informed her. If I do that, I would also lose my opportunity to become a noble, Hilda said, looking down. By the way, I heard that Lady Lucia stayed in that mansion for a week, Logan told her. Hilda was surprised to hear that, wondering if she should count herself lucky that the Duke was asking her to stay for only one night. She laid her head down on the desk, feeling upset. She didn't even know a single magic spell, which made her anxious. Well, if you have enough mana, you could possibly learn a few basic spells quickly, Logan said to her delight. Each person had different affinities for specific attributes. I specialize in sound magic, Logan said to her. Hilda wondered what sound magic was, watching him raise his hands. It took a few seconds for her to recognize that she couldn't hear herself speak. She was still trying to understand what had happened when Logan snapped his finger and her voice returned. Wow, I thought magic was supposed to have flashy and explosive effects, she said. She asked Logan how he had come to discover his magical talent. Hmm, constant hard work? Logan said. Hilda found his response quite unhelpful. Thinking about it, she was curious to know her mother's specialization. Lady Lucia, I believe she often used magic with the water attribute, and she was specially fond of ice spells, Logan told her. Hilda felt the attribute would suit her as well, but that wasn't the case, as affinities weren't inherited. Rather, they were largely influenced by an individual's personality or disposition. Hilda wondered why personality and disposition, and the more she thought of it, she could understand why her mother's was easier to understand. Her mother had once told her that despite its gentle and soft appearance, water was strong enough to cut through steel and erode the earth. I think that kind of strength describes my mother well, she thought. Hilda chuckled, attributing the fact that Logan had an affinity for sound because he nagged a lot. What is the easiest water spell? She asked Logan. Logan, acknowledging that he may not be as good as Lady Lucia, poured his tea on the table and made it rise for a while before letting it drop. 
It's possible if you can sense the flow of magic and arrange it correctly, Logan stated. How? Hilda asked in excitement. Just hard work, Logan said again. Hilda stared blankly at him. Logan explained that the only way she could learn was for her to try it herself and keep trying until she became proficient, as it wasn't really a set of processes to follow, but something you could grasp naturally through practice. Hilda decided to try. With so many attempts, she couldn't do what Logan had done. She began to doubt if she had any mana. Hmm. Considering Lady Hilda's personality, perhaps the fire attribute would be a better fit, Logan said, making Hilda ask him what kind of personality he was talking about. Logan showed her the most basic fire spell and asked her to try it. She said the spell and nothing happened. See, it's too much for me, she said, but immediately started to feel hot inside, as though her blood was boiling. What is going on, she thought. Logan got up from his seat quickly and hugged her, asking if she was okay. Ha, ah, yes, she said. Looking around, she noticed a blue kind of fire. What is this? She asked Logan. The fire that was magically created was not easily extinguished, and it was barely put out after all the furniture had been burnt to a crisp. Back to the present. Come to think of it, we struggled for a while trying to extinguish that fire, Logan said. Seems like Logan was thinking the same thing as me, she thought. Doesn't that mean I have a considerable amount of mana then? She asked Logan. You could say so. Being positive is good, Logan replied. Hilda assured him not to worry too much about it. By the way, something occurred to me last night, she said to him. She told him that she had heard about the night mansion from her mother before. My mother said even if I were to enter the night mansion, I could solve everything by beating everyone up with this iron fist, she said, raising her hands up in the air. Logan, who had been eager to hear what she had to say, was shocked and speechless. I carried several beers at once when I worked at a restaurant, so I have confidence in my physical strength, she told him. I see. Being positive is good after all, Logan said. Wrapping a blanket around her, Logan wished her a safe return from the mansion. Now it feels like I'm stepping into a battlefield, Hilda thought, still thanking him for the blanket. I'll be back, she said, and walked straight into the mansion. Entering the mansion, it looked more normal than she had expected. I should be careful with my steps since it's dark, she thought, climbing up the stairs in the mansion. She walked up, finding the portrait of a man staring directly at her. She wondered if it was the portrait of the mansion's owner. Ugh, it's nothing special, but it's creepy, she thought, walking away. She decided to go to bed, hoping it would be morning by the time she woke up. Hilda wandered around, trying to find where the bedroom was. She looked through the window to find that it was now dark outside, but what caught her attention was the fact that Logan's carriage was still at the mansion. What nonsense! He must be here to monitor if I spend the night properly in this mansion, she said, still staring out. She laughed at Logan for not being able to trust people. What's so amusing? A voice said behind her. Who's there? She turned to ask, but found no one. She lifted up the torch in her hands, wondering what it was that spoke. You don't know how to use magic, do you? The voice came again. Where are you? Stop fooling around with me, she yelled, still trying to find where the voice was coming from. Let's cut off her arm and eat it, another voice said. Hilda shouted, feeling a pull on her arm. I want to eat her head, the second voice said, and Hilda felt a pull on her hair. She looked by her side as many hands grabbed her, pulling her in different directions. What is that? Something like a weasel, she said, and began to chase after it. Let's catch one of these first, and then try to communicate or negotiate with them, she thought, going in the direction she had seen the weasel go. She couldn't take the first step because a hand grabbed her, making her fall and also breaking her torch. This is the worst, she thought. With the lantern shattered, she couldn't see a thing, and it looked like her palm was bleeding. Ha ha, idiot. She's nothing at all. The first voice came again. Hilda sat there, surrounded by evil spirits who were making fun of her. Would you look at these bastards having fun, aren't you? She thought. Tears were running down her face, furious that so many things were standing in the way of her becoming a noble and living comfortably. Someone who was supposed to be her grandfather just sent her to such a dreadful place. Servants of the duchy messed with her right from the very first beginning, 
just because she came from a commoner's background. This is where the story ends. If you like a story like this, like, subscribe, and comment with the name Hilda.